Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be another World Chalice combo tutorial for the post-Extreme Force, post-February 5th, 2018 ban list capabilities of this deck, because this deck does have access to things like Sir Yuja Skulldred now, which does change the capabilities of what you can do, and also changes what you need to be doing in terms of managing your resources around into an economical way to make as many Sir Yujas as possible, to make as many Skulldreds as possible. So this video is going to be an updated form of the Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice combo, because there are multiple different ways to do it. But I do not believe that I've been seeing anybody performing the combo in the best way that is possible to do so. Uh, and so I'm going to show you the way that I most commonly see people do this combo first, and then I'm going to show you the way that I perform this combo in the second instance of a combo being performed. Basically, a lot of people use this as a fast, free, and easy way to just make a really cookie-cutter, really linear multiple Sir Yuja play, which allows you to draw four, put the three worst cards in your hand back into your deck, twice and you you know sort of cycle around some resources but otherwise you're just trying to dig for waterfront maybe dig for soul charge something like that but even if you dig for soul charge your soul charge isn't going to be that massive because you haven't dedicated the proper resource building into the process of being able to soul charge for like infinite cards like a used firewall dragon that you linked away with and stuff like that so i'm going to show you the more common play that Venus plus uh, World Legacy World Chalice is being used to do first, and then I will show you afterwards what my uh, specific way that I combo with this is, because a lot of people, like I said, will just make two Star Yujas with this, uh, which is fine in its own right. If you're just trying to be very simple and you're not trying to put a lot of uh, like extensive uh, time and thought processes into learning the deck, that's very fine. But what if I told you that you could perform an Ngirsu draw 3 off of just these two cards and then resolve a Saryuja, which allowed you to draw up to 10 cards in your hand and then put the three worst ones back, keeping 7 cards. It is quite literally a draw 7 play that puts the three cards back into your deck that was the worst cards in your hand at the point in time. Uh, but so you end up with a lot of stuff if you perform the combo in the second way I'm going to show you. But the first one is the fairly simple cookie cutter way that people like to perform this combo is using Venus to get out your three shine balls, linking the first shine ball away into an Imduk, then tributing a shine ball away for a World Legacy World Chalice, and then going into their first Suryuja, which then allows them to draw four and put the three worst cards back after they proc its effect, uh, but then you also get to put World Legacy World Chalice as Chainlink 2 on this. Now, if you're using, uh, if you have more World Chalice monsters in your hand, you're capable of using Imduk as Chainlink 3 to mask both of these cards from Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, uh, but even in this instance, if you do not have any World Chalice cards amongst the three cards left in your hand, World Legacy World Chalice by itself masks the Saryuja, um, which means that only this card gets ashed, but I don't even want to say only this card gets ashed, because, I mean, that still kind of sucks. But at the same time, uh, the end goal is to resolve Saryuja to draw four and put three back to fix your hand, and usually you can, uh, you can like, mold upon that uh, based off what you have uh, at your accessibility pool. Uh, but so, if it goes through, your World Legacy World Chalice will resolve... Uh, especially in Lee and a Chosen out of your deck, or whatever vanilla you choose to run, and then the Lee will search for something that can be used. And then usually people will just use Saryuja to special the card out of their hand they just added, and then they'll make another Skull Dread, drawing four, putting three back again. Um, and every time you do that, you do net yourself a plus one. Uh, because you, uh, a plus one to your hand, rather, because you'll be drawing a car, you'll be drawing four cards on top of the three, and then you'll be putting three cards back, so you'll end up at four cards in hand off the first Suryuja, and then you'll go up with the Lee Search, and then you'll end up with five cards in hand after you resolve the second Suryuja Skulldred. So you end up with a five card hand, but you'll only end up with a Suryuja on field, and you've already used, like, the most valuable resources in your turn structure. You've used your Lee Search, you've used your World Legacy World Chalice, and if you drew into something like Soul Charge or Reborn or something like that, your graveyard is a mishmash of a bunch of monsters and cards that don't really do a lot in terms of their value, and this card gets you some value back as well, being Guard Dragon, but it's not really something that's, like, a huge, like, swing in, like, card economy for you. 
So, like, you basically just rotate your cards out for basically, uh, basically just one-for-ones until you pick the best cards to use, because you end up with a Saryuja on field and nothing else, and you end up with five cards in hand, so you've ended up with a plus one overall in terms of the play string, but that is honestly pretty lackluster in my opinion, because I play this deck like a numbers game. Like, this deck is a formula to be solved. So, I'm going to reset this real quick for you, and then I'm going to show you the combo that I like to perform with Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice, just as a standalone two-card combo combo that allows you to draw three off Ningirsu and then resolve a fairly economical Suryuja to draw seven cards and then put the three worst ones back. Alright, so like I said, this combo only requires Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice. It requires no outside factors until you want to extend it later on in the combo sequence just to make one minor change to the outcome. But you can completely do the draw three play and then go into Saryuja with just these two cards. Now, if you have another World Chalice monster in your hand, obviously it gives you more security because you can mask your World Legacy World Chalice from Ash Blossom with your Link Monster's Grave effect and also extend the play to boot. It also, you know, generates the, uh, the altered outcome that I'm going to discuss later. But basically, if your hand is literally Venus plus like a bunch of cards that don't necessarily do anything, with your combo sequence this still works perfectly fine so i'm actually going to leave these revealed because like we can discuss cards in hand that matter a little bit later but so you're going to normal summon the venus and you're going to use its effect paying 1500 to summon the three shine balls and then you're going to link away the first shine ball into link spider and then you're going to link the other shine ball into Imduk. now this looks like we're just going to go straight for a regular saryuja play not even using the world legacy world chalice but that's actually not the case at all you're going to tribute the Shine Ball to Normal Summon World Legacy World Chalice to your Monster Zone with the additional Normal Summon that Imduk provides you. And then from here, you could go into a Suryuja, uh, and you have all the capabilities to do so. Uh, you also have the Imduk on field that you're going to link away with, and that could dodge Ash Blossom on your World Legacy World Chalice and Suryuja if that's the play you want to do. But like I said, we're going for a higher outcome. We're going for a bigger play. So, you're going to link away the World Legacy World Chalice and the Imduk, into a proxy dragon or it could be an Eeb, uh priestess of the world chalice it doesn't really matter which one it is i personally i personally just prefer the fodder card to go into uh, ningirsu with uh, that's just my own personal preference but then from here your world legacy world chalice will trigger and you're going to summon two from your deck now you're going to summon very two specific cards and that is lee the world chalice fairy plus a vanilla uh, you're going to be, like, tempted to summon Guard Dragon in this instance, but that's actually just the incorrect play. You're going to summon these two, and you're going to use Lee's effect to add the Guard Dragon to your hand. This is very, very important for how we're going to get to the draw three and structure cards around in a way that makes Ningirsu draw three rather than drawing two. So, from here what you're going to do is you're going to link away with Link Spider, and you're going to link away with the Lee that is over here. And you're going to link those away into Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, next to the Proxy Dragon Arrow in the center of your field. So then from here, this is just chilling over here, this vanilla that you summoned. So you're going to you're going to link this card away, and you're going to link it away into Imduk up in the extra monster zone that has now been vacated by the Link Spider by you making uh, Eeb here. So now from here... Uh, that was only possible if you summoned um, if you summoned Lee plus the vanilla. Because if you summon Guard Dragon plus vanilla, you're not going to get a Lee search. If you summon uh, Lee Guard Dragon, you don't have the vanilla left on the field. You have the Guard Dragon here, and you need the vanilla on the field to get to M Duck. Now you could obviously change the structuring around to where like you tributed this for World Legacy World Chalice and left the Shine Ball earlier. But you want to keep this on the field as long as possible because you could draw into things like Exodius as a possible extender off of your Ningirsu, especially considering that you were drawing three cards. But so from here, what you're going to do is you're going to use Lee's Graveyard Effect, discarding the Guard Dragon to the graveyard to add it back to your hand. So now this is going to function as the card that we're going to be specialing to make Ningirsu draw three cards. And then you're going to use your Guard Dragon, banishing Guard Dragon from the game, to special summon any vanilla, whether it's Chosen or your Shine Ball, next to the Proxy Dragon Arrow. And then you're going to link it away into your third Imduk. So now from here, it should be pretty pretty self-exclamatory. You're going to link away the Proxy Dragon and the Imduk into a Link 3, going for Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior. Ningirsu's mandatory effect will be Chain Link 1, and then you're going to make Imduk Chain Link 2 to make this card be masked from Ash Blossom if that is applicable. And then you're going to special the Lee next to its zone, and you are going to draw three cards off of the Ningirsu. 
So now from where we are currently, we're in a very good position to make Sir Yuja Skulldred in a very economical way. We've got Venus plus these cards that are basically just fodder, the Emduk plus the Lee's basically just fodder here. The Eeb is the only card we don't really want to get rid of if we can help it, because with the Eeb getting used for Sir Yuja Skulldred, you're using a monster that is worth two Link materials, as one link material for the Sir Yuja Skull Dread. So, if you have any f way to extend your play uh, with one monster, whether it's whether you opened a World Chalice monster in your opening hand and you specialed it off the first Emduk when you were resolving World Legacy World Chalice's effect, that would be on the field at this point. That is an extra monster. Uh, whether you draw into Exodius, you can use that to extend your play, obviously, by a ton. Uh, you have e -Telly if you're playing the Chosen build. You have the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine that you can draw. You have Brilliant Fusion that you can draw, which is huge, uh, because then that searches uh, your, like, Herald of the Orange Lights and stuff with Eva, while also giving you a Lee, while also giving you a monster on field. There's a bunch of different extension, uh, like extender cards that this deck has that puts one monster on the field. So if you do have that, uh, or if you had like the World Chalice monster in your hand originally, like I said, it would be on the field like right here, um, and you would have used it off the first Emduk to be summoned out of your hand like way back when we resolved this guy's effect. Uh, you would have the extra monster on the field already, and you'd link those four into Saryuja, keeping the Eeb and the Ningirsu. But even if you don't have those cards, you can just link Venus plus Eeb plus World uh, Chalice uh, uh, Imduk, man. <laughs> I kind of started having a stroke there for a second. Into Saryuja Skulldred. And then from here, you get to draw four more cards. And then from here, you have legitimately ten cards in your hand of which you get to pick seven of them and put them back into the deck. Now, obviously, if you had the other World Chalice monster in your hand to put on the field, if you had the card to play like Shade Brigandine, that obviously lowers this down to nine cards instead of ten, but it's still the same amount of actual, like, uh, plussing and minusing the card economy because you're going to keep the Eeb on the field and have nine in hand, Versus getting rid of the Eeb and having 10 in hand. So like, it's, it's a one-for-one -one card conversion. Even though the Eeb is technically worth two monsters when you're stepping up into bigger link plays. But I digress. So like this lets you resolve a huge Sir Yuja Skull Dread. And then you're able to put just like the three worst cards back into your deck that you don't necessarily want. Uh, like you just get to put them on the bottom and just dig for cards like Reborn, Soul Charge, Brilliant Fusion, Kyoto Waterfront, Exodius, all this different stuff. Um, like, I'm not activating these cards in this instance, even though they're being drawn, uh, but, like, it's because, like, I'm just trying to prove an example, but, like, I'm just trying to show you these cards to show you, like, the powerful things you could draw into, like, they actually just are huge. Like, it's actually just fantastic, uh, what you're capable of potentially doing with this sort of stuff. Uh, now you have used your Guard Dragon, which is kind of a resource that you need to, uh, like, that you don't get to utilize to its fullest with, like, doing, like, step-up Firewall Dragon plays. Uh, but, like, you get to dig for so many cards. And considering that the first play that I showed you was just ending on one Saryuja on field and ending with five cards in hand, with the same combination of cards, this one ends with Saryuja, an Ingirsu, and you end with seven in hand. So, you're already ending with a plus one on your board because you have Ningirsu plus Saryuja, where previous combo had just Saryuja, and then you're ending with two extra cards in your hand over the previous version of the combo. So if you want to actually dedicate time and, like, development and resources and, like, just thought processes into generating the better play, whether it may be unconventional or not in terms of, like, a play line, that's perfectly fine. This deck fascinates me because it is all just a numbers game. That's all it is. Every single thing that you're doing is weighing the value of your resources against one another as you're going on. This Playing this deck feels like I'm doing like accounting. Like, it's like, ah, this Lee is worth two monsters here. If I summon it, if I keep it in hand, it is worth one now, but two later. Venus is worth four monsters. Exodius plus Venus is worth four monsters. Uh, World Legacy World Chalice is worth three monsters by itself. But if it summons Guard Dragon, it's now worth four monsters, because Guard Dragon revives a vanilla if there's one engraved. If it summons Lee, it's now worth five monsters, because it searches another monster. Uh, Brilliant Fusion is worth, uh, with Eva in deck, it's worth three monsters. 
Uh, like, there's all these different things that, like, you go into uh, with, like, how you structure your resources around. And if you want to start focusing on unconventional routes that, you know, break away from the linear cycles of what you're seeing people do, you can achieve a much greater result. I have fan I love this deck. That's why I'm gravitated to it. Like, even though this deck will probably never win a YCS again because it is very flawed in terms of how it operates and, like, the card pool that it currently has... Unless it just gets a fantastic good wave of support, or like a fantastically good like new World Chalice Link monster or something, this deck has a very, very large amount of flaws that are going to be keeping it from doing like any like large amounts of success on any competitive circuit going forward. But it's still just fascinating to play, because every time I play this deck out, I feel like there's a better way to utilize the resources, you know, weighing them against one another like I previously said. But anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, as I've already said, I didn't expand upon this, even though, like, every card in my hand is an extender. <laughs> like, because you should be able to, like, figure this out. Like, Brilliant Fusion for the Seraph Knight, Make Firewall, Send Eva, Trigger Eva, Special Lee out of your hand because the Nagirsu goes to Grave, Special Shade Brigandine, you have Reborn, you have Exodius. Like, there's so many different ways to extend upon this based off what power cards you draw, and those are the variables that I can't really cover in the scope of one single video. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, as usual, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. And so now the video is over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that's supporting the lower tiers. You guys are forever awesome for the support that you give, you help make things on this channel possible, and I cannot express the amount of appreciation I have for you guys. You guys are awesome, thank you so much for the support.